we're getting on the bandwagon, folks. We are getting on and we're running. Hi! There's some incessant beeping going on outside. Literally, it was fine two seconds ago when I started filming. Thank you. Hi, friends. How are we? I am jumping on the frame TV bandwagon. I want to make a frame for this TV. This like corner of the house, I kind of want to finish out. I have a plan to kind of work around the living room and kitchen to kind of complete it in stages. And this corner where I film, like where I film most of these intros, this corner right here is pretty good. I like this corner. It feels good to me. It's probably the prettiest corner in our apartment. And the mantle is nice. I love the the fireplace. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love the green and I actually even don't mind the white mantle. That's just how it is. I can't paint it. I don't want to. It's oil paint. Don't get me started on my landlord. Don't get me started. But the TV that we have, that we've had for, I'm sorry about the beeping. It's just going to be how it is. That we've had for years. This TV is pretty old at this point. I think we've had it for four or five years. We bought it years and years and years ago. We don't really use it that much. It, it's above here and Jordan and I will sit here and we'll watch a movie sometimes or if we're going to watch a show together, watch in here. But we also have a TV in the bedroom and we're iPad children, the two of us. Like we will sit on the couch together with our own iPads cuddling, watching our own shows like together. So the TV, it doesn't really get a lot of like use and it just kind of sits here. And I was looking at it and then I was on TikTok and I saw all the girls are making frames for their non-Samsung frame TVs. And I went, me too, me too. Remember what I said when I said I'm just like every other girl? I'm just like every other girl, we're gonna frame it. And I'm very excited. This TV is big. I think it's a 45 inch, I don't know, I'm a girl. That, and that's honestly none of my business. I don't need to know, I don't care. But it has to sit really low on the wall because that's where the stud is and it, in these walls. The ceilings are quite high, but we have this like beam up at the top and then the, the stud, the next stud up is too high. The TV's too big to sit on that stud it wouldn't fit up there so it's got to be on this lower stud and that doesn't really bug me i have some trailing plants along it that sort of thing and i'll i decorate the mantle on it i think it's fine like visually it fills up the space and with the balance around it i, I think it's fine but when i was thinking about framing i wanted something quite substantial i wanted like at least two and a half three inches and if i did that that meant that it would touch the bottom because i wonder if i could just make it look like like it touched, like if it was on there on purpose and this was less a hung piece of art on the mantle and more like a piece of art that we just plopped up on the mantle and is hanging, like just leaned up against the wall. So I went to Home Depot yesterday. some fun things. <laughs> These two different trim pieces. I got this larger piece. I think this is, this is like crown molding trim. Like this is trim that goes up top. And it has a really pretty simple profile. Just a couple of bumps and a curve and a, a swoop. And then I got this pretty like more detailed piece and it's these one, two, it's these four little bumpy ridges that I thought went really well with the ridges in the mantle and that same great detail on the fireplace. I kind of wanted it to it to make sense. It also kind of mirrors all the layers that are under it here. And so I thought this would like make it match more. And my plan is to like this here. Hold on. Let me let me let me adjust. So I know it's kind of hard to see cuz this is white and this is white, but I wanted this to touch here so that it looks like it's just placed on top. Cause see what happens when I do this. If I made this frame so that it fit and it was just this one piece, do you see that weird gap I get at the bottom? This gap is unacceptable to me. You would never hang anything that low. I mean, I could hide it with plants and stuff. Like I, you could make it work, but I, I, I didn't like that. And I wanted more detail. So I got this other little piece and it's just gonna go up here like this. See? And then it will just look, this will be all the way around. It will be substantial enough that it looks like it fits the TV. It will ground it on 
the mantle. Let me pull you out and show you what I mean. So when I see it from where you are, over there in the middle of the living room, it uh, like it makes all of this flow and adds it all together. This won't be white. I have some fun gold it's gonna be, and I'm gonna make it a little vintagey, distress it a little, make it look old. Once it's all assembled, we'll get there. And I think it will really add the needed weight to the space that it's missing and finish it all out and be really, really pretty all the way, it will go all the way around. Ha ta ta! I think it's gonna be really pretty. So I'm gonna tackle this project kind of in three phases. First phase being assembly or um, like assembling the frame itself and then painting the frame and then distressing the frame and making it look older. So it's kind of gonna go in three stages. So to assemble the frame, I am going to be using these miter snippers that I picked up at the at the hardware store. They're, they're quite nifty because I, I have a miter box and I have a saw, but I, I thought that these might do a better job, at least for the smaller trim. It's actually like quite a cool little contraption. It kind of looks like a, a heart or a bottom bottom of a spade. It has all the angles on it already so that you can tell what angle you're trimming at. And it's got the little measurements in there. So I can, at least I can mark it or snip it. Like they're like kind of like garden shears. With those shears, the first thing I'm gonna do is measure and snip out my small pieces, that small inner trim, and then start working on the larger trim. I'm going to be making them separately and then gluing them together once they're in full pieces. That way I can really make sure all the angles match and everything's squared up. If I have to sand anything away, I can. And that way I'm gonna get a, a cleaner look in the end. This is hard! <laughs> on the floor. Oh, I did it! Okay. Note to self, the floor is the floor is where it's at. Yeah. We send it. I had already done this edge earlier, you can see. But now they are mitered. Okay. I had to change it to my sweatpants because those jeans for working on the floor, they just weren't doing it. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it in those jeans. Okay. So I've got my uh, inside detail pieces all cut. I made a mistake in the measuring when I cut them at the store. So I do have to like Frankenstein a piece, but that's that's okay, I'll, we'll fix that later. That's I can't worry about that right now. I'm worrying about getting these angles right. So this is like the inside edge here. This is the outside edge. And this outside edge has to meet the inside edge of this next piece and these angles have to match up, you know what I mean? Like they're gonna be together. The long end, it's gotta go this way. Oh, this is, this kinda feels better. Ooh. I'm gonna have to Frankenstein this piece too. There's gonna be two Frankenstein pieces. Oh. I was so silly! I'm too silly, silly, silly! The outside measurement of the inside piece needs to become the inside measurement of the outside piece, you know? So that because the, the outside piece, this needs to sit inside like this. I was measuring it like this, where it needs to be measured like this, because this is gonna sit inside. So this piece actually needs to be cut on its angle here. Same way, I just, it's my gun. I should have checked twice. I should have gone twice. Construction's going crazy out there. I'm going to put aside the outside pieces for now. I'm gonna have to run to Home Depot. Jordan has the car. I'm gonna have to go when he gets home later. This is this is an insane sound they're making, really sorry. And I'm gonna put together the inside piece because these are all good and these are all the right size. So I'm gonna glue these together. I'm just gonna assemble them separately anyway, so it's fine. I gotta glue them together and then they can start setting. It's fine. All right, hi. 
Before I have a full-blown mental breakdown and they start beeping again out there, I am going to put together the inner piece, the, these, these smaller trim pieces and assemble those so those can get drying and good before I have to go back to the hardware store later and get more of the larger trim. Gluing and piecing these together, I'm going to sand the edges. That way they're just a little bit more flush and glum and I, there's less scraggly bits. I know I, I am gonna have some scraggly bits, especially in those larger pieces that broke when I snipped them, but I'm gonna do my best to make that look like wear and tear and like it's an older frame and make that like a part of the charm. Really where I'm gonna start is by sanding down the edges of the inside pieces and then I'm going to glue them together with the E6000 and use kind of I'm gonna use some tape to hold that together and keep them flush. I don't have any clamps or anything, so I'm just making do with what I have. And once that's dry, I'll be able to go back in with wood, uh, wood filler and really make it look as clean as I want it to be or as not clean as I want it to be and really make it look like it's been been through it. I think I want, I want this frame to look like she's been through it. Kind of like how I feel right now. That's what we're doing. Okay, Jordan is back from work. I am done this part. We need to go to the hardware store to get the rest. I'm just gonna grab a chunk so that we have what I know. Oh God, this pimple. Um, so that we know what profile it is because I didn't write it down. So I gotta remember which one it is. I'm gonna get enough to just get a whole piece. So I'm not gonna Frankenstein the other piece and it'll just have extra. I think that's fine. So four and a half feet? Yeah, that's what I wrote down on my little thing. I wrote it down. Some smart girl. Okay, slow. Do you think maybe I did this on purpose because I wanted to saw more things? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm home. I got my piece. Oh, where did I put it? I got my extra piece. I made it four and a half feet so that it would be the length that I need so I wasn't gonna Frankenstein. So I'm just gonna have an extra piece and I'll do it with that, whatever I do with that. The uh, the girls have been taking care of it and making sure that it works. They were supervising the dry time. Right girls, you were supervising for mom? Me, let me put you down here. So at this point, it is like seven o'clock almost, 6.30, seven o'clock. I wanna get it all assembled tonight because I think that, that letting it dry overnight is like the best bet before I paint it. I'm just going to do everything I did with this little piece and it's holding up really well. I like it's holding together the liquid nails, there's liquid nailing. I might throw a couple of staples in it. Actually, I have that staple gun from when I reupholstered the couch and I have more staples. Oh, hi baby. Just to add some strength. And I'm just gonna assemble the larger pieces the exact same way. And then I'm also going to liquid nail, like I'm gonna let that set once I have all the all the corners like mitered and put together. Let that set for like 20, 30 minutes before I uh, attached the inside trim to the outside trim. That way it all gets to cure overnight together and then I can fill holes in the morning and we can paint tomorrow afternoon. That would be ideal. should let me eat all the liquid nails, but she won't because she says it's bad for me. Good morning. The construction is just, it's going crazy. Um, it's almost noon. I've given them all morning to shut it, but they're not stopping. So here we are. I stayed up quite late last night. I late for me, so I don't know. Fussing with this and I got it all glued together and I let it sit overnight. We are glued together. She's stable. I wanted to give you kind of a, here's where we're at. So hold on, let me, let me put this tea down. All right. Are you ready? Dun, 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 dun. I put the art up on the, on the TV. I, 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 not this art in particular, but we see? She's cute! I'm definitely not a professional frame maker. So this is the first time I've done it, so be nice. But I think it works. I think it really does add a great impact to this space, even before it's painted. It does what I want. It's gonna ground the TV there. I can see the vision. Do you see the vision? Because I see the vision. I'm talking to you, specifically. You. Yeah, Blondie, do you see the vision? I see the vision, the wonderful vision of every white girl on the internet. <laughs> I love it, I think it's beautiful. All right, at this point, the next step is to sand 
and wood fill all my little areas and like get all the glue off front, sand it down and kind of perfect it and like get it wrapped to the spray painted. I'm really going through and kind of being a mild perfectionist. My art wants me to make this as perfect as possible, but I know that's not going to happen. So I'm going to kind of lean into the fact that I want this to kind of look distressed and filled and like, like it's been repaired. So I'm not going to go crazy with making every little detail perfect. I'm going to leave a little roughness. I'm going to leave a little, a little gap here and there, especially in these places where I had to like Frankenstein. I am back inside and I'm actually going to antique this a little bit and just add a little bit of depth into the ridges and the detail of the trim that I chose. That smaller one has those like bumps in it and I really want you to be able to see that and add a little bit of dimension and also like add further weathering and like oldness. Like I don't want it to look dirty but I want it to look a little dirty, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Then you went and caught my eye. Oh, yeah. Okay. The first night of the rest of my life. So I have done it to this section up until here. This is it without the antiquing in just this, this, these, uh, in these little ridges. You can see that it just is the slightest bit warmer. Like it has so much more depth here. Like it actually looks like it's weathered instead of just freshly coated. I'm gonna do it all in these little ridges too. And I'm gonna go all the way along and I'm gonna do it. I was always supposed to find you. But now I realize it was always supposed to be. That is not water for cats. No, she has a full fledged belly. She wants to drink a dirty acrylic paint water. What am I gonna do with her? I want you to live your best life. Have all the luxury, but you don't want the luxury. You want to be a trash can. Why must you be a trash can? Why are you supposed to be? I was always supposed to find you. I can see a difference. I don't know if you can really see one on camera, but I can see one with my eye. It really just adds that extra layer of depth and detail and makes it look like an actual frame to, in my brain to me. I didn't end up like attaching it to the TV up. It's just, it's just kind of sitting on the top lip and then leaned against the mantle. And that's kind of by design. If I put it right up against it, the remote doesn't work. So like leaning like this, the remote still works. Like I can still turn it on and off um, and change channels and stuff. I don't have to like drill a hole or anything with the remote. And it really does offer that illusion of it just being a piece of art sat up on the mantle. Oh, I love it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like. Comment if you've made one. Tell me about it. I'm definitely not a master picture frame maker, but I'm really proud of it. I think it does look like an antique or like an older, like it does look like an item I like kind of fished out of the trash or like someone left it on the side of the road and I just snagged it. Sort of situation, it doesn't look like I, I made it, which I like. I like that. That was what I, I wanted to go for like a thrifted vintage look anyway. So I think my like low skill level kind of helped in that way. Who knew? Didn't plan for it. I thought I would have to distress it. Turns out you just need to have a low skill level. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much. I will see you guys in my next video. Oh, I forgot to say, if you like this and you like me, uh, check out some other videos on the channel. And if you liked it, give it a subscribe. We are almost at 200 subscribers and that is bonkers to me. I'm so grateful for you. Have a great rest of your day. I will see y'all later. Okay, hold on. Um, and you got, you saw a lot of ketchup. You haven't seen seven in a while. Does he pass the dangle test? Not really. He. He's very camera shy. He does not 
He does not like being on camera. He knows when he's on camera too. Like he doesn't like being on FaceTime or anything like that. He, I don't know. I'm not gonna force him to be on camera any more than he wants to be. Normally he's with me all the time, except for when I'm filming. He does not want to be around the camera. So I will respect his privacy. I'm a good mother. 